In this tutorial, I will show how to use extruded mesh features by Gmesh Mesher inside RepoMax. First, we'll open a file to work with some geometry. Go to File Import, find the RepoMax folder and subfolder models, and select the Gmesh Extrude step file. Confirm by OK to load three different parts. We can see that all of the parts are very similar. They are uh, L-shaped uh, profiles which were extruded into the Z-direction. We can see that we have two parts where both extrude base extrude surfaces are the same. And we have a third part, this is the green one, where uh, not the whole geometry was split, but the base surface of the extrusion was split into four sided faces. So this was done in a CAD modeling software in order to be able to create a transfinite mesh. First, we'll set up uh, some meshing constraint about the mesh size. So double click mesh setup, select the meshing parameters, select all three components and choose max element size three and mean element size as one. All the rest of the setting will remain default. Confirm by OK. Now let's try to mesh this uh, solid part one as an extruded mesh part. Go to mesh setup and double click. Now find the extruded mesh mesh setup item. Now we have multiple properties uh, that we can select from. Uh, so how the this base surface will be meshed. And then if we want to use a transfinite or recombined algorithms and we have additional setting for the element size in the extrude direction. So in order to see how these features uh, change the meshing, we have to select a surface, the base surface of the extrusion. So if we select any other face like those two, no uh, arrow will be uh, shown. But if I select the correct surface, the surface that was used for the extrusion, extrusion, I will see this arrow pointing the extrude direction. Prepomax will automatically detect the extrude direction and also the extrude depth. Now if I hit uh, the button for the preview, I will see how the mesh will look like on this um, base surface. We'll see a, a triang triangular mesh on the surface. This base surface is not a three-sided or four-sided surface, so we cannot apply a transfinite meshing constraint, but we can create a recombined mesh by using, a, for instance, a blossom algorithm and a quality setting of 0.7. Uh, if we preview this mesh, we can see that we are uh, given the mesh on this base surface, which is mostly curated from uh, quad elements and there are some triangular elements in between. Now those elements will be extruded into the, the third direction and the number or the size of those elements can be defined by uh, here, by the element size, the scale factor uh, by the setting uh, of uh, when the, the, the element size is defined by the scale factor. This scale factor uh, changes how the size of the element in the extrude direction will be. So a factor of two will mean that the elements are twice as large in the extruded direction. So let's try with these settings, confirm with OK, and create the mesh for this part by right-clicking on it and choosing Create Mesh command. We have to turn on meshing in order to see the mesh. And as you see, the mesh is uh, extruded into the Z direction and the elements are twice as large in the Z direction as they are in the other two directions. And we are, we are um, having a mesh with mostly hexahedral elements and we have some uh, wedges, some triangular prisms. Let's go back to the geometry tab and let's try to mesh the second part the gray part. Uh, again, uh, choose the mesh setup with double click and find 
extrude mesh uh, mesh setup item select the surface that was used for the extrusion you can see that now even uh, when the surface the extrude direction is at an angle it's correctly recognized and also the extrude uh, depth is recognized as we will see after meshing again we have to set up for instance uh, recombine algorithm blossom and the quality of the uh, quad elements is 0 0.7 and now we can change the element size in the direction of the extrusion instead of by scale factor we, we can define it as a number of layers so let's select 10 layers in the extrude direction confirm the ok right click the component and select create mesh to mesh it now you can see that again the mesh is extruded uh, the mesh contains uh, hexahedral and wedge elements maybe their quality is not very good in the extrude direction because the number of layers is too coarse but uh, I use the setting just in order to show how this uh, setting by the number of element actually works so we have two parts already meshed let's go back to the geometry setting and try to mesh the third part again double click the mesh setup item select the extrude mesh command and now we have to decide how we'll mesh this green component we can select uh, the base surface on the other side so this is a one surface and the extrude direction is already recognized so we can already do the extrude but if we preview the mesh we can see it at the, the mesh preview that the transfinite mesh is not going to work here on this surface so maybe we can try and mesh this component this uh, green component from the other side if we now select only one of the uh, surfaces we don't see the arrow indicating the extrude direction which means the extrude uh, feature is not possible so if we want to extrude from this direction when there are multiple patches on the base surface we have to select all of them at the same time we can do that by holding the shift key on the keyboard so here shift is adding items or we can select the selection by the angle so the surface angle and we can just select one of the surfaces and click it the extrude direction is recognized and we can preview the meshing with uh, the current settings we can see that the mesh looks like a transfinite mesh in all the patches that we selected and we can then uh, add the recombination algorithm let's say a blossom algorithm to get nicely uh, meshed base surface after we are satisfied with the result we can maybe change the scale factor from 1 to 0 0.5 confirm with OK and then create the mesh by right clicking the component and selecting the command create mesh As we can see, the resulting mesh now contains only hexahedral elements, so there are no wedge elements in between. On both sides of this green part, we have a structured mesh and yeah, the base surface, which was split into multiple patches, is now was now projected onto the uh, target face and now also the target face is split because of it so these three examples somehow uh, represent the basic meshing procedures for extruded meshes and conclude this tutorial